So the next thing that I wanted to have a look at here was where maybe the proof is quite abstract. And what does that proof really mean? Yeah, I mean, we're just seeing it with like fractions and things. But sometimes I really like to think about how else I can visualize these proofs. How I can sort of, not this isn't a proof, this is more like a visualization of what might be happening here. So um, I've got four different, five different things I want us to do to this graph at the top. I'm going to do this one together and then you're going to do another one. So first of all, what's the name of the graph? It's sine x. It's obviously y equals sine x. We're going to try and show that the derivative of sine x is cos x. This is not a proof. This is just a geometric examination of what's going on here. And the second thing, as I've said, is draw tangents to the curve at 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And I've said C example because I'm going to do one of them as an example for you now. So I'm going to draw a tangent at 0 to the curve like this. 1 at pi over 2, 1 at pi, 1 at 3 pi over 2, and 1 at 2 pi. So I've got some tangents to those curves there. And for the third thing, I've said estimate the gradients of these tangents. Well, some of them are really, really easy to tell me what the gradients are. Um, where, which are the easiest ones to tell me what the gradients are? At which points? Half pi and 3 pi over 2. Half pi, the gradient is obviously 0. And at 3 pi over 2, the gradient is obviously 0 as well. What do you think the gradient is at 0? The gradient is 1. The gradient is 1 because this is a sine graph. And we know for small angles of sine that sine, is approximately, sine x is approximately equal to x. And the gradient of x is 1. So the gradient at this point is 1. The gradient at 2 pi is also 1. And the gradient at pi is minus 1. Yeah? So when I'm now going to, on, um, for point 4, I've said I want you to plot these gradients on the second set of axes. And what I'm plotting now is the gradients. I'm plotting a gradient function. I'm plotting the derivative of the function. And then we're going to see what, what function we think it is. So at 0, I think the gradient is 1. At pi over 2, the gradient is 0. At pi, the gradient is minus 1. At 3 pi over 2, the gradient is 0. And at 2 pi, the gradient is 1. And that looks like the cos graph. Now, this is where I have to try and draw the cos graph without making too much of a meal of it. So the derivative of sine x is cos x. That's not a very well-drawn cos graph there. It's a bit hard to do it when I'm on the board. But hopefully what you can see is just a visual idea of sine x differentiating to cos x. The gradient of sine x is actually the values of cos x. And so what I'm going to ask for you to do, I'll leave it on this one in a second so you can see it, is I want you to do the same process for this function. Obviously, it's a cos graph. And you're going to see what you think cos graph, uh, sorry, what you think cos x differentiates to. OK? So I'll give you a few minutes to try that. And then we'll just see what the answers are. I'm going to start doing some of this as well. So I think this is cos x. And let's draw some tangents. And so what do you think the, that graph is that you've drawn? No, minus sine x. So that's what cos differentiates to. So we've got here. Okay. 
Okay. Tan curve is not easy to tell. Okay, so actually that's a really good point. So what does it look like cos x differentiates to? Minus sine x, okay? So cos differentiates to minus sine, sine differentiates to cos. So sine differentiates to just the positive version, cos differentiates to minus sine. And it's, you're gonna be able to do it with a um, proof, a dif differentiation from first principles. But the way I used to remember it when I was your age is I think of the cos graph and I imagine at the beginning of the cos graph, the first thing it does is its gradient becomes negative which is why it differentiates to something that's negative. Whereas the sine graph, the first thing that it does is its gradient is positive, which is why it goes with cos. That's one of the ways that I remember it. There's lots and lots of different ways of remembering it. Probably the best way of remembering it is just by doing tons and tons of practice. That's the best way to get things into memory. It's just practicing loads and loads. And then Shahan said to me, would we do the same thing with the tan graph? The reason we wouldn't do the same thing with the tan graph is everything in trigonometry is built out of sine and cos. Even tan is a mixture of sine and cos. So once we have proved, using the definition of the derivative here, once we've proven what sine x and cos x differentiate to, we will be using those definitions to find the definitions of the other trig functions. Okay, so we couldn't really do it with the graph because tan doesn't differentiate to anything pleasant. Tan actually differentiates to sec squared x. Not something you'd never be able to sort of notice like that, okay? So...